leadership is kind of a passion of mine. I am especially passionate about it because I do feel that um, there is a lacking of leaders in our communities, in our churches. And I think that it's a lot easier to be a leader than maybe people think. And so I'm going to get the presentation started. So I want to challenge maybe the way people see leadership and maybe even their own strengths and their own weaknesses and maybe look start looking at themselves in the leadership role i hope that um i'm hoping that i can get through both parts because i think they're kind of important so i have two parts to the slideshow and um i have a cracked screen so i printed out my slides so i'll be reading from papers for a few verses but for the most part it should go really smoothly i hope <laughs> And now I'm going to share my screen. So leadership. Um, now, I want to challenge the concept of leadership and what it takes to be a leader. So the, the first slide is leadership characteristics. There are tons of studies about what makes a great leader, what makes a really um, powerful leader, the way leaders think versus other people. And there's a lot of different angles that people come from, come to look at leaders. And sometimes even the, the, the concept of some people are natural born leaders. And my first thing that a lot of people talk about when it comes to leadership characteristics is there's this list of what makes a good leader. So I put some of them up here. Sometimes I usually do this like a back and forth and we put a, um, we, so you can even come up with some of your own phrases and characteristics that you think make up a good leader. And one of them is always communication skills. Another great one is charismatic, good listener, bold, fearless, but the list goes on and on about what makes a really good leader. And um, how do those people have power and influence over their community, over their business, and how do they really make changes? And so there's been a lot of studies in this area. And I think sometimes there is a, an overleaning in the characteristics. But first thing, and which is kind of cool, I get to, oh, oh, I jumped the gun. Yeah. I wanted to talk about humans within the, your design are leaders. And I think, okay, here. So in Genesis 128, this is kind of interesting because I get to read this verse twice in one day. But in Genesis 128, and it says, and God blessed them and God, oh, yeah, there we go. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. But I want to say that God established us as humans, as managers, as leaders, as explorers. And there's evidence in scripture for this, but there's also evidence around us. We are given this super capacity in our minds and your brain is actually a natural problem solver. It's really a puzzle decoder and that's what you have on top of your head so one thing i wanted to say is as a person you have that capacity to be a great leader and to set the stage i'm going to read three pieces of scripture so you're gonna to have to bear with me here and the first person i'm going to talk about is noah noah was a man in genesis and he saved the whole human race by building a boat the second, and I'm going to read that. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before, oh, here we go, my crack. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without the pitch. And this is the fashion which shall make of it. The length of the ark shall be, and then I trail off because he goes in to explain exactly how to make this ark. So I'm just setting the stage. I'm gonna, we'll talk about it in a minute. The second person I want to talk about is Moses. And I'm going to read you this kind of key verse. So Moses was the guy who saved God's people, led um, the God's people, Israelites out of slavery and into Canaan, the promised land. So that was him. 
And so this kind of sums that up, this verse. And I jump around a little bit just to condense it. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now come therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So there's Moses, and here's the last guy. Some of these verses. This is Paul. Now Paul was the guy God chose to build his church. And this is one of my favorite verses. Um, and I... It's just cool to see, you know, what happened to Paul. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in deaths often. Of the Jews five times I received 40 stripes. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I was suffered shipwreck, a night and a day, and have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the head of the heathen, in perils of the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. So I talk about these three men, and we're going to see, so the first one was Noah, I get Noah and Moses confused. The first one was Noah. He built a ship. God came to him, gave him um, what to do. And then we see Moses. He goes, takes his God's people out of the land of Egypt and into the land of Canaan. And then we have Paul, the person that God chose to establish the churches. And I love this scripture because it just shows what he went through and what what happened to him during that time and then at the end you know the care of all the churches so one thing that we're going to see with these three people is there is there is a message in here that we can take away and there's also one message that we do not get to apply and i'll talk about that as well so the first thing i want to kind of go through is what makes a really great leader despite characteristics is these people have a vision a purpose and a destination so when you're talking about business or you often hear um vision and mission vision and mission but i want to kind of get the jargon out of the vision part but vision is having a clear destination for your future and a purpose for that future. And we teach this in our graduate program because a lot of the people that um, are going through it, they don't have that clear vision. And they, they do wanna make an impact on, on, on their community and with their work. And so we teach them about vision and purpose, but we break it down differently. And so a vision is a crystal clear mission or, purpose or a destination for you and your future and how this is different than other characteristics that make a leader a leader is if we look at moses or we look at noah or even paul we see that these people did not have necessarily the characteristics that people think of it as a leader we see a little glimpse in Mo of Noah and just he had some sin issues and with Moses he did not have communication skills as a matter of fact Aaron he asked Aaron to speak for him and when he did this because he didn't he didn't think he could do it and when he did this it says that God's anger burned because it burned toward him because of it so he didn't have the communication skills and yet look at what he did and then finally, we see uh, Paul. Paul is building God's church, 
and yet his life isn't necessarily going the way you would think it would go. Having a vision, having a purpose, and having a destination creates traction. It creates more traction when, if you have a destination. So I like this picture here because when, just like when you put your hand through water, when you have that destination, it's more than just your hand that's moving. It starts cre creating traction in the environment as well. And it, even when you pull your hand out of that water, the, it creates a wave in a direction. And so that's the power of having a vision and a purpose. But I also want to talk about some of, some of the outcomes of having a vision and a purpose. So, so, and I have actually a better list here. So one of the outcomes is it cleans up the problems in your life. So a lot of people struggle with different areas in their life and and it, one reason to have a mission or that futuristic destination, that futuristic perspective, is it will start to clean up other areas in your life. It, it could, for me personally, it also cleaned up just uh, work habits, um, family issues, because now you're making decisions based on a direction versus just living life. So a good example or an analogy would be a runner who wants to be a gold medalist. That's a perfect, really crystal goal is if you wanted to be a runner with a gold medal. And to have that, it would change a lot of things about you as a person if that became your goal. You would change who you hang, hung around with. It would change when you went to bed. It would change when you woke up in the morning. It would change your diet. Uh, it would change a lot of things. It would change who you hang around with. So having that goal, some of the side of uh, secondary benefits other than the goal, other than that picture that you're going toward is it cleans up other areas in your life. And we teach this, this vision, purpose, destination concept to addicts because sometimes they have a hard time. They're, they're maintaining their sobriety but a lot of the other elements in their life are missing. And so once you start being able to crystallize a vision of yourself in the future, it cleans up some of the other areas that they're having in their life. Um, I wanna say the next piece is it changes your perspective on life's challenges. So when we see Paul floating there in the, in the ocean or being whipped, if that was happening to me, I would be, wait, maybe I'm making some poor decisions in my life. If I'm being thrown in prison, I don't know if I'm making good choices. And that's the difference between having that vision, having that purpose and having that destination. It really clears up the problems in your life related to what you're doing. So even somebody from the outside might not see what, what, if you're even making the right life choices. But once you have that perspective, it changes even the grinding aspects of your life. Uh, and that's the other aspect. Problems in your life aren't just random. They become more meaningful. And we'll talk about that in a second. And the other aspect is like Paul, you become ruggedized. Once you have that purpose and that crystallized aspect, you become ruggedized, meaning you're able to withstand a lot more. And that reminds me of somebody who is hurt. Maybe they get hurt in the arm and, and it hurts them and it kind of messes up their day or something like that versus somebody that was working out and their arms hurt. It's that perspective change that changes the way you even see pain, the way you see suffering in your own life, and even the way you see some setbacks. And finally, uh, not finally, but uh, having a vision destination, that purpose gives you a backbone. And I love the verse, and I think I put it in here. Uh, it's in Ephesians 4.14. And the verse is talking about somebody that doesn't have, uh, that doesn't have good doctrine. But the, the, the concept is the same. When you don't have that, that focus or that, that, that understanding of what you're supposed to be doing or how to do it, 
you become like a person tossed to and fro. That henceforth, we be no ch more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they live, lie in wait to deceive. And so you start to have more of a backbone where before you may not had an, didn't have an opinion about something. Now, because you need that, you're, you're have that focus, you, you have an opinion about it. You have an opinion about what enters into your life and you do have an opinion about where you go and what you do. And finally, as I showed you with that, with when you're going in a direction, it just naturally creates traction and you get more out of your labor. And there's a really cool quote by a person called Jim Ron. And uh, the quote is, if I can, yeah, I may not have it. The quote is, if you don't have a life plan, chances are you will fall into someone else's. And if you, and guess what they have planned for you? Not much. I just love that quote because it's very true. If you don't have a life plan, you will be sucked into somebody else's endeavor and it will be very difficult for you to decipher what, what it is you should be doing and you will not get the most out of what you should be doing. And that's the other aspect of having a, a vision or a destination. All of us grind through life. We all have work that we're doing whether we have a plan or we don't have a plan life seems to be just as grueling just as hard and everybody i know um, has a lot of daily grinding uh, work in front of them but when you have a destination when you have that crystal clear purpose for your life you your work goes a long way, a lot farther. You're not working and just tilling for no reason. So here's another quote. Whether you have big goals or small goals, it's the same amount of work. So the final thing is, if you are to look and find a vision, find a purpose, or look at the destination in your life, you've got to make sure it's big and big enough or else you get bored. <laughs> and especially with addicts, one of their biggest, uh, I'm not saying you're addicts, uh, but we do this for addictions groups, is we tell them they have to get their goals big enough because they, they get bored by their own, you know, their own grind of life. Okay, so now that we have this, okay, we cracked the code on leadership. It doesn't, you know, uh, not that uh, characteristics don't matter, but humans are, are born leaders by design, by how they were created. Not everybody has a mission and a vision and a destination. And also having a vision, having a, a destination is like a, a cheat code to being an exceptional leader. As we see, Moses couldn't communicate. Uh, Paul, he's, he had physical ailments, and we see Noah, uh, he had some sin problems. <laughs> but they all had a destination. So, and they had a clear vision of what they were doing, and that's what made them great people in the, in the Bible. So the bad news about having a vision and a destination is once you decide that you are going to have goals, once you decide that you are going to have a different you in the future than the person you have now, you create out of nothing problems in your life. You create things that did not exist before that are going to be challenges. And I like to use this garden picture example. Um, if I had a, and I do, if when I had a, a picture of me in the future with this lush garden of tomatoes and squash and, and beans, that was my picture. But I wasn't, I didn't understand that I was also creating issues that didn't exist before. Snails didn't, wasn't a problem in my life before. The soil wasn't a problem in my life before. Frost wasn't a problem in my life before. Until I had that picture, until I had that vision of my future with this lush garden, I didn't have those problems.
And so the bad news about having a mission and a vision and a destination, as we see with Paul, uh, you are about to create more problems. So there are some strategies, but when you do have that crystallized vision of the future, your problems and your efforts and your work are all proactive and they're all meaningful and so what we have we have this these three phases that we use often and it's gain ground hold ground and minimize loss Hold on. so gaining ground is where that's the fun part of your labor that's when you're starting to achieve your goals when you're starting to gain traction on that person you want to be in the future um, that's the fun part that's where all the energy comes from but most of the time you're in this holding pattern and it's uh it's just if you work at a factory you which i have done before it, there's the the day in day out grind of what you're doing and that's holding ground that but it becomes a lot more meaningful when you have a vision of the future in mind and this is where you build your team this is where you're looking for opportunities and this is where you are um, looking for ways to advance toward your goal or even um, holding back but it's the day in day out I, this is kind of where you live every day you know you're doing your laundry you're picking up your clothes but a lot of times you're holding ground but when you are holding ground when you have a purpose and you have that vision of who you want to be in the future it becomes a lot more meaningful and this part of us i keep going back to addiction because it comes up often and this is the part where people lose hope because it's that long journey we always tell ourselves it's going to take 10 times longer and be 10 times harder than we thought going into this and it kind of sets our mind up for that part of it and it's that that hold ground aspect and then finally this happens a lot and it's this minimizing loss where and minimizing loss when you have that your purpose in mind is a lot different feeling than when you don't have a purpose and minimizing loss happens waves come wind blows everything away and everything down but a lot of people when this happens or where people are struggle struggle with this is they throw up their hands and they give up they get discouraged and they and they have a hard time coming back from that time those parts of your life when you have a dis, a destination it 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 does ruggedize you to those things and i go back to the verse we looked at with paul he's constantly being, being smashed and yet it isn't deterring him because he has that picture of what he's doing and uh recently we were here in la mesa and our buildings were broken into and they've actually broken into every single building but ours but within hours the whole community was with brooms and paint and um and wood and screwdrivers they were rebuilding so quickly but what happened during this time was the the feeling of community was was almost not worth wasn't worth the damage but it was close it was almost worth it people began to really come together and during this time this minimized loss space as we see with paul in the that in the verse when he's floating it really shows it's your time to show your family your team and the people counting on you as a leader what you're made of it shows exactly how your character is and 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 who you really are so even when you're being trampled when you have that vision of you in the future that destination that you're trying to go to even those times are actually not that bad they're in a whole different light than when you don't have that aspect mm -hmm. okay so as i said before make the goals big enough so that way it's worth it so even in the daily grind even all the problems you're not going to get bored with them but goals take a long time so you have to have that long road there are no shortcuts shortcuts are different than the long road in that 
they're not sustainable. You don't gain character and you don't gain mastery from shortcuts. So taking the long road is the way to do, to have a long destination. And we see with, uh, with Moses, it took, they were wandering for 40 years. That is a very long road. Hopefully yours doesn't take that long. So I want to open it up for questions, but this is just the end of part one. And I'm trying to see how good I am on time. But I just want to see, how are you guys doing so far? Well, so the second part, and, and I don't know if I could answer it totally. I, I, I'll try. But in the second part, so one thing I get after I do this, it's usually an hour long. They say, okay, that's great, but it actually brings a lot of anxiety because they don't have that mission and they don't have that vision and they don't have a clear purpose. They do know that they want to do something. They want to be, everybody has that. They want to be impactful and they want to make a difference, but they don't know how to do it. And so at the beginning, I said that there's, that we can apply these scriptures in one way where, but we can't in another way. And this is the other way. Noah had God literally tell him what to do. He told him how, or he told him what he was going to build and how to build it. And even out of what materials Moses, he was told through a burning bush exactly what to do and where he was going to go and what he was going to do. And he was literally given to him through a burning bush. And Paul was blinded by a light and told that he was going to build his church. The, the difference between them and us is I've never been told exactly what to do like that. And that's where we can't apply it. Um, and so I do think it is difficult to find that vision and purpose if you've never done it before. Unless somebody has a question, I don't mind going through the rest of it and trying to give some direction on how to find that vision, destination, and purpose. Because I do have some tools for that. Do you want me to try to blast through them real quick? I will. Unless, but if you have a question, stop me. So part two. Dr. Ray, we have one question in the chat box. Oh, yeah. Can you? Uh, it says, what about leaders who have multiple failures? Um, should they look inward or change their vision? No, um, I always have this in my brain. Um, I, I do believe that failure is the precursor to success. It's just the way we, we there, that's how you gain mastery is through will uh, is through failure. Um, I think a lot of Christians you know, and me too, bow out. I think they bow out a little bit too early in the fight because they think that maybe God's closing the door. But really, this world is hard. Any type of achievements are done through a lot of hard work. During the curses in Genesis, and um, it, everything, our labor is through the sweat of our brow, and it will produce thistles for us, thistles and thorns. And I think that is a missing element sometimes. You got to have grit. You can't just quit, uh, especially if you have a clear vision of what you want. And so uh, does that kind of answer that? And he says, yes. That oh, good. So I have four techniques for trying, because I cannot give you like the burning bush like Moses, but I can... I think that uh, there are ways that you can find a vision and a purpose. And one of them is looking at finding your vision and purpose, looking at the domains in your life is one way to do it. So I mentioned earlier about a sprinter who wants to be a gold medalist. Well, that's a very one dimensional goal. Sometimes those people who are successful as in sports or CEOs or, or in business, the rest of their life doesn't look like what you would want. So I would suggest looking at the different domains in your life as a way to try to find the purpose. So what I mean by that is me, I, um, I'm, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I own a business. I have multiple domains in my life. I also am a Christian 
and I have convictions um, for certain things, you know, that might be family or it might be work ethic. Looking at those domains in your life is kind of a roadmap to looking at the, your destination in the future because who you are today is going to be part of that. So you're on step one and the person you see in the future is probably different than who you are today. It is for me. So I know for a fact that I'm a father, I can be a better father. I have weeds in my garden that I can tend right now and just haven't. Um, as a Christian, as a church member, um, as, a, as a husband, I, there are things now who, that I will still be in the future. So I'm gonna be a husband even in the future. I very hope so. And, uh, and that's, but I can start to piece together that destination with what I have right now. So am I the husband that I imagine I should be, or I imagine that I would want to be? So that's, these aren't going to give you that vision, but these can set you toward piecing that together. Another domain in your life is your gifts. Um, there's spiritual gifts, but there's also natural abilities. And so starting to piece together those things you like doing, um, things you're already doing now. If you're a student well, uh, and you're studying to be an engineer, well, that's a domain in your life. And you can think, okay, I want to be the best bridge builder in the future. So what am I going to have to do to get to there? So having that destination is going to start having a look at your domains in your life today can help you crystallize who you want to be in the future because it is people do have a hard time they're like i just don't know what what to do but you can look at the domains that you have now and then i want to say um another aspect another tool is to look at the problems in your life so the problems in your life now are actually a roadmap to who you want to be in the future as well. So I'm, I'm like trying not to run out of time because uh, it's a little bit of an explanation. But I do believe that the problems in your life right now can point you into the person you want to be in the future. And I guarantee you the person you want to be in the future, if you were to imagine it in the future, doesn't have these problems. And the way to get rid of those is to be able to think proactively about the problems in your life. Most people don't do this. Most people ignore their problems that, not all their problems, they ignore the problems that they don't know what to do with. They don't think they have the resources and they don't think they have the capabilities to overcome them. So what they wanna do is turn away from them, they want to ignore them or they want somebody else to deal with it and instead, I would encourage people to go stare at those problems. Don't, you don't have to fix them, but don't ignore them. And slowly but surely start to understand it. And having a mindset that problems that are too big for you, if you can look at them and examine them, that is being proactive. And that is being, um, that is a work, is to do that. And you'll notice a lot of leaders that do have, a lot of problems, they're able to have loose ends hanging around them where people that cannot get to a destination, they can't handle those types of problems. So that's one way to start looking at how to find your purpose, your destination and your vision is actually looking at your problems even if you don't have solutions for them. And the, the third thing I will talk about very quickly is what, what in counseling we call it the magical question. The magical question is actually different types of questions, but it's one way actually to not look at your problems. It's if my problems were to go away today, what would my life look like? Because some people can't even identify their problems. Or another one is if I were to have a guarantee from a genie in a bottle, oh, I have it here a guarantee from a genie in a bottle not to fail, what would I do? So these are some tools that, um, that can help you start to piece together that purposeful destination for your life. 
And uh, the final thing that I want to make sure I bring in is prayer and meditation, because they, even though it's, I am talking in linear fashion, it's all working together. And normally the answers to your problems, if you're addressing them and looking at them and trying to find what you want to do and try to find where you want to be in the future, it comes in the wee hours of the morning or the late hours of the night when you're alone and meditating with God. And so those are some tools that you can use to try to piece together your, uh, your mission, your vision, your destination for the future. I hope that helped. It was very fast. <laughs> I do think it's important that uh, we do have more, uh, I do believe that people can be leaders within their family and their communities and that having, um, having that perspective of themselves is an important aspect that I think could help communities is um, people having that ability within them to see um, what needs to be done in the future with themselves and, and with uh, and with their environment to to make a difference. So I think all of us need to be doing that type of stuff. Despite um, having problems in our life, despite having sin in our life, despite having uh, physical ailments or 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 even all the problems that we still have in our life. Thank you guys for joining my uh, breakout session. I appreciate it.